Okay, so ito yung example problem. So, sagutan natin. So, JC Company reported inventory on December 31, 2020 at 5 million based on physical count of goods price at cost and before any necessary year-end adjustment relating to the following. So, at cost, ibig sabihin wala pang markup ni. Kasi may mga given na problem na meron ng markup. So, ibig sabihin may patong na. So, pag may patong na, ibig sabihin kukuhanin mo muna yung at cost kasi ang inventory recorded at cost. Okay? So, sabi dyan, included in the physical count were goods billed to a customer FOB shipping point on December 31, 2020. So, these goods had a cost of 125000 and were picked up by the carrier on January 10, 2021. So, tingnan nyo yung dates dyan. Mahalaga yan kasi dyan natin malalaman kung dapat ba siya i-include at hindi siya dapat i-include. Dyan, pati yung terms na FOB shipping point and destination kung included or excluded. And then, yung pangalawa, goods, sh uh, goods shipped FOB shipping point on December 20, 2020 from a vendor to JC Company were received on January 5, 2021. So, the invoice cost was 300,000. So, ang invoice cost natin is 300,000. So, ang question dyan, what amount should be reported as inventory on December 31, 2020? Okay. So, anong kapag ganyan na meron ng problem, so, anong, anong gagawin natin? So, sabi ko nga, Una muna tingnan ninyo sino yung si entity kung siya ba si seller or si buyer. Pangalawa, ano yung correct? Sabi natin, di ba yung correct datin as a rule, so ire-record mo siya as inventory, included siya as inventory kung ikaw yung owner. Okay? So regardless kung nasaan yung goods. Okay? Pangalawa, ano yung ginawa ng entity? Ano yung record niya? In-include ba niya or in-exclude niya? So, para makita natin kung ipa-plus or ima-minus or wala ito yung gagawin na adjustment. Okay? So, kaya isa-isahin natin eh. So, review lang natin. Ano sabi natin kapag FOB shipping point? FOB shipping point. So, upon shipment, ang owner na ay si buyer. Okay? So, upon shipment, ang owner na ay si buyer. So, ibig sabihin, so in transit, sino yung owner? Si buyer. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin FOB destination, magiging owner lang si buyer, mapapas lang yung uh, ownership kay buyer once na na-reach na yung destination, na na-reach na, na, na yung destination ng goods natin, na na-reach na si buyer. So, ibig sabihin, ang in transit, ang owner pa rin ay si seller. Okay, ang tatanda, FOB shipping point, buyer, SB. So, FOB shipping point si buyer, kapag in transit, ang owner FOB destination, si seller kapag in transit. Okay? So, so yun yung kailangan yung tandaan. So, ibig sabihin dito, so, magkano daw yung physical count? Ibig sabihin yung nandun sa uh, stock room niya or sa, sa warehouse niya, magkano daw? 5 million. Okay? So, 5 million. So, ito lang, medyo, well, ma, ano tawag dito, uh, puno na yung whiteboard ko. Kung okay lang, i-record, ilagay na lang, ilalagay ko na lang dito sa, ano, yung computation. Okay. So, yung inventory natin, recorded siya. So, magkano daw? Ang physical count on December 31 ay 5 million. So, dito, meron ka ng inventory na 5 million. Okay. So, dito na lang. Ayan. Okay. So, 5 million. So, as of December 31, physical count natin. So, yung una dyan, tingnan natin, included in the physical count were goods billed to a customer FOB shipping point on December 31, 2021. So, una muna, ano daw, um, these goods had a cost of 125000 and were picked up by the carrier on January 10, 2021. So, dyan, una muna natin tingnan, sino muna tayo dyan? Si seller ba or si buyer yung entity? Sabi dyan, um, uh, included in the physical account or goods built to a customer. So, ibig sabihin, sino, sino yung entity? Tayo yung seller. Okay? So, tayo yung seller dito. So, kung tayo yung seller, sabi niya, ang term daw, IFOB shipping point. Okay, 
on December 31. So, ibig sabihin, yung goods na 125,000, in-include niya kasama dito sa 5 million. Okay? So, kung kasama sa 5 million, ay sa 5 million to 125,000, ang tanong, dapat ba siyang isama? Okay? So, ano ang term? FOB shipping point. So, ibig sabihin, FOB shipping point, sino yung may-ari upon shipment? Ang may-ari upon shipment ay si buyer. Okay? So, dito, ibig sabihin, sino yung may-ari dito? Si buyer. Upon shipment. So, kung si buyer yung may-ari upon shipment, ang titignan nyo dyan ngayon, kailan ba sinip yung goods? So, ibig sabihin, kung kailan siya sinip ang owner na si buyer. Okay? So, uh, dito mahalaga yung dates. Okay? So, kaya dyan, sabi niya, included in the physical account were goods billed to a customer FOB shipping point on December 31, 2020. Okay, itong date na to, huwag magkakamali. Yung December 31, 2020, ibig sabihin, in-include niya daw sa December 31, 2020, yung cost ng 125,000. Dito sa 5 million. Okay? So, this cost, these goods had a cost of 125 and were picked up by the carrier on January 10, 2021. So, itong January 10, 2021, ito yung shipment. Okay? So, ito yung shipment. Kailan sinip? So, January 10, 2021. So, ibig sabihin, si buyer, yung owner, kung kailan sinip. Kailan ba sinip? January 10, 2021. Okay? So, tingnan natin. Ano sabi natin? Di ba, i-compare natin dun sa correct Tsaka dun sa, uh, sa ginawa natin na recorded ni entity. Okay. So, ano yung correct? So, ang correct dyan. Okay. So, ang correct, ano sabi natin? Si seller dyan, tayo si seller. So, FOB shipping point, si bayang owner, upon shipment. Kailan, kailan na ship? January 10, 2021. So, ibig sabihin, si buyer ang may-ari kailan? January 10, 2021. So, ibig sabihin, on December 31, 2020, sino pa yung owner? So, ang owner pa din dyan ay si seller. Okay? So, si seller. So, ibig sabihin, ang correct, dapat siya i-include yung 125,000. So, dapat i-include yung 125,000 dun sa 5 million. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung correct. Okay? So, 125,000. So, ano yung recorded? Ano yung ginawa nung entity? Ano sabi dyan? Ito, oh. Included in the physical count yung 125,000 on December 31, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, anong ginawa niya? In-include niya. So, ibig sabihin, Sa 5 million na yan, naka-include na dyan. So, ibig sabihin, nadagdag niya na yan sa 5 million. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang correct, inad niya sa, sa in, kasama siya, nirecord niya as inventory. So, inirecord niya as recorded din siya as inventory. So, ano adjustment? So, ang adjustment dito, ano? No adjustment. So, wala kang gagawin. Bakit? Ulit? Kailan na-pick up yung goods? January 10, 2021. So, kahit na FOB shipping point yan, ang may ori na si buyer. Kailan ba na-ship? January 10. So, ibig sabihin, December 31, 2020, ang owner pa rin dapat ay si JC Company, si seller pa din. Okay? So, kaya mahalaga yung, yung dates dito, guys. Tingnan nyo kung kailan din siya na-ship at kung kailan siya hindi kailan niya na yung destination at kung na-include ba siya or in-exclude siya. Okay? So, ito lang kagandahan kapag naka-record yung, yung discussion natin. So, pag hindi nyo siya naiintindihan ng isa, pwede nyo lang siyang balik-balikan, di ba? Rewind the rewind nyo lang, back nyo lang siya. Okay? So, unlike ng face-to-face, -face, kapag sinabi ni ma'am, tapos hindi mo na-take down or hindi mo na-tandaan, ah, mag-iisip ka ulit. So, dito, 
back nyo lang. Okay, so ano nyo lang, balikan nyo lang yung sinabi pa ulit-ulit hanggang sa maintindihan nyo na. So, bakit, bakit dapat i-include pa rin? Bakit i-include pa rin talagang kasama dapat sa 5 million? Kasi FOB shipping point, kailan yung shipment? January 10. So, sino yung may-ari? December 31, 2020. Si seller pa rin. Kasi ang shipment nangyari, January 10, 2021. So, ibig sabihin, dun pa lang si buyer ang magiging owner. E tayo dyan, tayo dyan ay si seller. Okay, so kaya, anong gagawin natin? Diyan, magdadagdag ka ba o magbabawas ka or wala? Wala. Kasi ito yung ginawa, ito nga yun, yung sinabi ko sa inyo. So, dapat na i-add siya, dapat included siya. So, anong ginawa ni entity? In-include niya. Okay? So, anong adjustment? Wala. Kasi tama yung ginawa ni entity. Okay? So, yung pangalawa, okay? So, yung pangalawa dyan, sabi dyan, goods ship FOB shipping point on December 28, 2020 from a vendor to JC company were received on January 5, 2021. So, the invoice cost was 300,000. So, tulad lang nung ginawa natin dun sa una, so, ano mo nang tingnan mo? Kung ikaw ba si seller dyan or si buyer? Okay? So, tingnan mo na natin. Ano sabi dyan? Good ship, FOB shipping point on December 28, 2020 from a vendor. Ito. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, to JC Company. So, sino tayo dito? Tayo si buyer. Okay. So, si entity, si JC Company ay buyer. Okay. So, kailan daw na-receive yung goods? January 5, 2020. Okay. So, anong term? Ang term ay FOB shipping point. So, ibig sabihin, upon shipment, sino ang may-ari? Si buyer. Sino tayo? Si buyer. So, ibig sabihin, upon shipment, si buyer na yung owner. So, tignan mo ngayon, kailan, kailan yung shipment. So, sabi dyan, kailan shinip yung goods? December 28, 2020. So, ito yung shipment. So, shinip siya December 28, 2020. Kailan niya na-receive? Na-receive niya ito, January 5, 2021. So, ito yung receive. So, kailan na na-receive? January 5, 2021. So, tayo si buyer, ba? So, tayo si buyer, ang term ay FOB shipping point. So, upon shipment, si buyer na ang may-ari. So, tayo na dapat ang owner upon shipment. Kailan yung shipment? December 20, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, December 28, 2020, tayo na yung owner. So, kung tayo na yung owner, so, dapat yung 300,000 naka-reflect siya or recorded siya as inventory natin as of December 31, 2020. Okay, so, ano yung correct? So, ang correct ay dapat included siya dapat included siya as inventory. Ito yun. Correct natin, dapat included siya as of December 31, 2020. Kasi bakit? Shipping point, tayo yung buyer. So, ang shinip, December 28, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, December 28, 2020, tayo na yung owner. Okay? So, anong ginawa ni entity? Okay? So, ano yung record niya? Kailan niya na-receive yung goods? Na-receive niya? January 5, 2021. Ano sabi natin, di ba? So, normally, si accountant, ire-record niya yung purchases kung kailan niya na-receive yung goods. So, kailan niya na-receive yung goods? January 5, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, as of December 31, 2020, hindi niya pa in-include yan. Hindi niya pa yan ni-record kasi hindi niya pa na-receive. Okay. So, unless sabihin dyan na in-include niya na or in-record niya na. So, pag wala, so ang i-assume natin kung kailan natin na-receive yung pinurchase natin, doon natin siya, uh, doon lang natin siya inire-record as purchases, as part ng inventory. So, ibig sabihin, anong ginawa? Ano yung recorded ni entity dyan? 
So, hindi niya yan na-record. So, hindi niya yan na-record. Bakit? Kasi kailan niya na-receive? January 5, 2021. So, ibig sabihin, hindi niya yan na-record. So, ano dapat ang correct i-record niya? So, anong adjustment natin? So, sabi natin dapat ang mag-reflect ay itong correct. So, wala kang na-record. So, anong adjustment natin? So, ang gagawin natin na i-adjust natin, plus 300,000. So, ang gagawin natin, i-add natin yung 300,000. Kasi, wala kang na-record. Eh, ang dapat na mag-reflect ay 300. So, pag kinumbay mo yan, 0 tsaka 300, so, magkakaroon ng 300,000. So, kaya, pag in-record natin dito, pag dito, di ba, meron ka ng 5 million, dun sa una, wala kang gagawin, no adjustment, ba diba? So, lalagay ko na lang din zero, but pwede nyo namang hindi nalagyan. Okay? So, lagay ko lang para alam nyo na yun do sa una, ay wala tayong dapat gawin, kasi na-record siya ng tama. Okay? So, yung pangalawa, plus 300,000. So, kaya plus 300,000. So, magkano yung inventory natin as of dapat yung correct inventory natin, December 31, 2020, ay 5,300,000. Okay? So, ganun siya, class. Imagine ninyo, yan, dalawang ganyan lang, di ba? Pakakaisipin mo. So, kailangan mo siyang i-analyze ng tama. So, kapag hindi mo alam kung paano ka mag-analyze, mag-start na mag-analyze, yun yung nakaka- ano, nakakalito, or hindi nahihirapan yung studyante, kung paano ba mag-start na mag-analyze. So, di ba, lagi naman sinasabi, uh, ano, pinakamahirap naman talaga ay yung papano magsisimula. Okay? So, ganun lang siya. So, para alam nyo lang kung ano yung dapat na ano lang, um, ano ba tawag dito, kailangan alam nyo, ano yung una nyong titingnan? So, sabi ko, ano una titingnan? Ikaw ba si seller o ikaw ba si buyer? Okay. Tapos, tingnan mo yung transaction, kung ano yung correct. Then, compare mo kung ano yung record din ng entity para mas madali mong makita kung ano yung i-adjust. Kung ipa-plus, ima-minus, or wala kang gagawin. Kapag nakita nyo pa yan sa problem class, kapag multiple choice, makikita nyo yan, sa choices, lahat ng gagawin mo ay eh, nandun sa choices. Let's say, 5 million plus 125 plus 300 na sa choices. 5 million 325. Meron ding, pag hindi mo nilagay, 5 million, hindi mo lagay yung dalawa, nasa choices din. Lagay mo yung 5 million plus 125, hindi mo ilagay yung 300, nasa choices din. 5 million 125,000. Kano siya? 5 million, less mo yung dalawa, nandun din sa choices. So, kaya... Pag ganyan, mahirap talagang mag, ano, maghula. So, sa accounting, dapat, ano siya, accurate. So, alam mo talaga kung ipa-plus or ima-minus. Okay? So, gano'n lang siya. Kaya, pag tinignan yung class, pag ay, sa lecture, doon sa handouts, sandali lang ng ano. Pero, pag in na natin, so, ganyan na siya. So, sa intermediate accounting ninyo, kung aabot kayo sa first sem, sana naman umabot kayo lahat. So, yan, may inventory. Yan, madidiscuss sa inyo. Kahit pa paano, at least, uh, meron na kayong guide. Okay, so sa at... Okay, guys. So, mag-iwan ako ng problem. So, sagutan ninyo. Apply nyo lang yung lahat ng na-discuss natin. So, yung answer ninyo, i-comment nyo lang sa video. And, yung makakatama, makakakuha ng correct answer, may plus 2 points sa... Uh, quiz natin ng inventories.